Do you think you speak for a generation out there that the others have not spoken for? Probably so. But why is that? I mean, you think they're just not addressing the younger, the younger crowd? Uh, yeah, I think they're not, not at all. But I guess we're speaking for a lot of people out there that haven't spoke yet or afraid to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Check this out. On this episode, we're going back. We're taking it all the way back to November 23rd, 1988. On that day, Easy e released his debut album, Easy Does It. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to break the album down. We're going to reflect on it. And um, <clears throat> it's one of those albums that is turning 35 years old. It's hard to believe that the album is turning 35. Uh, but we've been around that long. And Easy e in this album um, and its impact still lasts to this day. And as you can see, <clears throat> I'm not doing this episode alone. Uh, back in the building once again. Is my man, my man, my mellow eclectic is back again. E, what up, baby? What's up, everybody? It's eclectic, aka Cleasy E. We want Cleasy, uh, PWA podcaster with an attitude. Um, it's, it's it's nice to be on the show. Thank you for for having me. Um, what's up, everybody that's listening? And um, and um, uh, no more questions. Yeah, no more questions. Fresh off the um, fresh off, he's fresh off tour, uh, with Andre Three Thousand. So we're glad to have you on here, man. Um, yeah, I play the, a mean. Uh, the, the, I play a mean piccolo. <laughs> the electric piccolo. So we're taking it back, man. Electric piccolo. Yeah, there you go, electric piccolo. Uh, we're taking it back, man. Like I said, November twenty third, nineteen eighty eight. Uh, as we we commonly say, nineteen eighty eight. Not only is the greatest year in hip hop. 1988 just might be the greatest year in music, period. If you don't believe me, when you get a chance, look at the albums that came out in 1988 on the hip hop side and the R&B side, and you can bring whatever case you want to me or Eclectic, and we'll tell you that you're wrong. But uh, 1988, man, um, again, this album, Easy Does It uh, by the legendary, the late Eric Wright. Uh, AKA Easy E. Um, so let's go back, man. Um, it's 1988. This album comes out. What was your, what was your introduction? Because you grew up. For those of you who don't know, Eclectic grew up in Ohio. I grew up in South Carolina. What was your introduction to Easy E in particular? Was it this album, or was it Easy the uh, excuse me NWA and the Posse, or did you pick up Easy E with uh, Straight Outta Compton? Well. Um... NWA and the Posse with um, with um, um, Fat Girl got a Fat Girl on a jock. That was a that was a that was a good song. That was Easy E. Um, and um, a long time ago, I had I, I got the um, the the single of Dope Man, and on the other side was Eight Ball. And this mm. is um, this is NWA and the Posse because when NWA album came out, those were remixes. So the original songs came out well before then, and so I had those, and um, it was great because there was nothing that sounded like that. The dope man, um, the 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 beat was crazy, and this is on the heels of everyone seeing Scarface. And they had the "Hey, Mr. Dope Man, you think you're slick?" at the end of it, and um, and the, the funky worm sample, mm-hmm. and and it was a lot of a lot of stuff in that um, in those two songs. Like I play another thing is very very dope about about Dope Man and Eight Ball is they had those songs and they were kind of filthy you know we found out what a strawberry was i I love i love (laughs) hip-hop back then hip-hop back then and our slang and vernacular you just got it so before dope man you didn't know what a strawberry was but cube told you what a strawberry was and they was like all right that's what it is 
Um, and but what what was so dope? You you didn't know what eight ball was until they told you. We knew what OE was. We knew what a forty was, but we didn't know they called it eight ball until that song. It's like okay, now I know what they're talking about. And, and it was just you listen to the song. It wasn't someone had to sit down and talk to you or tell you something or teach you something. You just listen. And we were smart enough to get things, you know, put the clues together. But anyway, um, what was so dope was they had those and then they had the radio versions. So they had the radio version of Dope Man. Where, mm-hmm. So... Um, it, they replaced all the curses. They didn't scratch the curses or something. They just rhymed differently. Nope. If you smoke nope, cane, you a all. stupid motherfucker. Then you listen to the other one. If you smoke cane, you ain't nothing but a sucker. It was. It was. <laughs> just listen to it. Right. You know. Um, and and so those were so. It was the 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 two songs were so cool. You would listen to both and be and be happy. And they don't do stuff like that anymore. They don't make the radio uh, faith edits. But um, so my introduction was was around then because one of the greatest things ever, <laughs> which made no sense, it makes no sense, but it's still one of the dopest days. Yeah, I'm the dope man. Yeah, boy, wear corduroy. Corduroy. <laughs> I don't think another rapper has ever said corduroy in a rhyme sense. I think he's Never. the only first and only one. <laughs> yeah, boy, Never. wear corduroy. It's so crazy. But um, 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 I know we got to get onto the show. But the the thing about Easy E and the Easy no, go, you good, you good. The thing about this that the him and this album. Also, I'm the only person that you will ever find. Who likes this album more mm-hmm. than Straight Outta Compton? This is my favorite that is, Compton. That is true. Rough, yeah. R- r- this is my album. I love this album. Um, so the thing was the the gimmick, the 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 scam that they had when this came out, because when when this came around the time when Dope Man and Eight Ball came out. The, the rumor was because he was so short and his voice was easy he was a kid <laughs> right and, <laughs> and so they they made it the rumor went out and they made it seem like he was 15 mm-hmm. when this came out they said he was born in 73 right and um and then also which was also funny when the um album came out, and on uh, still talking. If you you didn't know, this is the thing. There was no internet. You didn't know anything about anything. And if you're like me, and you were in Ohio, if you were Conley, you was in South Carolina. If you were people that that was in New York, and never went anywhere, you don't know this. But mm-hmm. the beginning of it was like, yeah, he's from Compton, Michigan. <laughs> If you don't know, you like, I guess Compton is in Michigan. I'm in Ohio, like shitty up the street. And, but it's, it's just funny. And people thought he was 15, thought he was from Michigan, thought he was a kid. And why is he cursing like this? And even um, um mm-hmm. on this album, and we'll get to it on this album, just like, what's your real age? No more questions. <laughs> no more questions. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah back man. then this was dope. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. It, it, uh, you, you touched on a lot of stuff, man. I think it, it, for me, I came to Easy E, uh, courtesy of my boy Jay Fresh. Jay Fresh, I, I, I thank him all the time because he put me on to Easy E, and he had NWA in the posse. And I want to say I only heard a couple of songs off that album, um, because I never got a dub. I, te- he said he was gonna dub a tape for me, but he never did. And then by the time Easy Does It came out, I want to say maybe the second week it was out, he had the tape. And it was funny because I didn't have I that particular week, I didn't get my allowance or whatever. And um, I said, yo, man, let me cop a dub. Because I sat and listened to the whole album at his house. And um, I was blown away. And um, when it was time for me to leave, I thought he was going to dub me a tape. He's like, no, nah, man, you got to go buy it yourself. 
I'm like, man, what you mean? And now keep in mind, now this this album comes out in 88, so I'm like 15 years old. I ain't got no money, I ain't got no job. And he would not let me buy, he would not let, he would not make a tape for me. And so he's like, man, you gotta go buy this, man. You gotta, he's like, you don't wanna, you don't wanna be cheap. He's like, man, you wanna buy this for, and so, so he can get paid. I'm like, easy, rich, he already paid <laughs> because we didn't know, you know? And um, it's just like you said, E, I mean, like, there was a mystery around Easy E. Like, almost everything he said on Wax, we believed because we didn't know any better. There was no internet. There was nobody re to refute anything. So I didn't know where Compton was. Compton was this mythical place that I'd never heard of. And I don't think it was in, until later that I realized it was in California and it was a suburb of L.A. Like, I I didn't know. Like you said, I, it could have been Compton, Michigan. It could have been Compton, South Carolina, for all I knew. I, I'd i never heard of. I, I was very familiar with all of the cities up and down the East Coast. But I didn't know about, you know, I knew my geography or whatever, but I didn't know about a lot of stuff out West. So, and I was familiar with L.A. because I'd been to L.A. before. But when I went to L.A., we went to Pasadena. We went to the Super Bowl. We didn't we didn't go to Compton. <laughs> so, so I never heard of Compton before. But um, Everyone, this dude, that, right? what's that? Everyone you heard, he went to the Super Bowl. Just, yeah. I just wanted to throw that out there. I, my uncle was playing in the Super Bowl. I didn't go on. Everybody, I didn't go because he, he had opulence. His uncle was playing in the Super Bowl. Everybody, his his uncle is Joe Montana. This guy. <laughs> Lies being told. Lies being told. But anyway, so yeah, I, I'd never heard of Compton. So this guy was a mythical figure. And we had never heard anybody rap like this. We had never heard anybody talk like this. So, you know, in, in a lot of ways, man, easy, easy e to us, particularly me and my friends in South Carolina, he was a legend. I mean, like we didn't call him a legend back then, but he literally was a mythical figure because even then, other than the album cover, until they released a video, I didn't even know what he looked like. You know, he had this high pitched voice. We weren't, like you said, we weren't really sure about his age. There was rumors saying that he was 15 he was 16 i was like there's no way this guy's my age and you know we had no way of looking it up it wasn't like he was in the encyclopedia you couldn't go to google back then um but again man 1988 uh off the heels of nwa and the posse comes easy does it um so when you first got this album do you do you remember if you had the tape or did you get the record or how, how was your uh or did you cop a dub what was your process as far as this landing in your hands um, I had the tape and I was I was incredibly happy that I had this tape um, because, again, I had the, the 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 single, the Dope Man 8-Ball single. After I heard that, I just wanted to hear more. So when I got the tape, um, I ran <laughs> home, threw it in the radio. And I mean, again, this is my favorite probably my favorite West Coast album. This is my favorite thing from NWA, wow. Eze, e all of those. This app, it's only one eh, skip, I think, on this album. See, I think it's like two. Listen, you can't be better. You can't have something to dance to and be better than this album. So, uh, listen, Arabia Prince is not on okay, this okay, album. Okay, 20 second time. 20 second time out. 20 second time out. Good, good. Let's, the sidebar real quick. So let, let's go back to what you just said, man. Okay, so you are one of the few. You are the only person I've ever heard say this. You put this album over straight out of Compton. Why? Not that you're wrong, but I'm, I'm, I just want to get why. Oh, it's easy. Because the songs on it overall are better than me. So if I go, if I go song for song, mm -hmm. I would rather listen to this over straight out of Compton. I think it has more replay value. Um, as much as I like um, If It Ain't Rough or um, something like that, or Compton's in the house or Quiet on the Set, that's one of straight out of Compton, they're not better than Too Hard Motherfuckers or Radio and No More <laughs> Questions. It's just, they're, they're just not. Now the highs of Straight Outta Compton really are really are really hard. Look, look straight out of Compton, fuck the police, gangster, gangster. Those three mm -hmm. right there are 
and I ain't the one. Don't forget, I ain't the one. Okay, are are crazy, but you gotta, but you also gotta understand the boys in the hood that's on here. Easy does it. We want easy. Nobody moves. Still talk. This this album. If you if you look at it without looking at the popularity or the the Mm -hmm. I guess quote impact of it, because these both came out the same year. If you look at if you look at if you look at it objectively, song for song, and also aside from I ain't the one and Straight Outta Compton, on Straight Outta Compton, Easy is the star. Cube Cube gets busy, but um, Easy E was like how Nas was in the '90s. If you had a song that f- featured Nas on your album. People will listen to that album and listen to the song and just wait like jumping in the double dutch ropes for Nas's verse. You just like <laughs> I, I know it's coming. I can't wait. And it was the same thing when Easy came in on a song, no matter what song it was, and and we knew he didn't write it. It didn't matter. He just had that persona. He had right. that Oh, no question. He had he had that that presence that was like yo that's 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 so dope. Listen listen to him listen to him get it. So um, this this album aside <laughs> for one this is 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 near perfect. Okay okay um I I I, I get where you're coming from. As much as I love this album and one of the one of the beauty beautiful things about doing this review is going back and listening to this album. Uh, Cause I haven't heard it in its entirety, probably in a, in a, in a probably maybe about two years, but just over the last couple of weeks or whatever, sitting and listening to it, man, it just brought back so many memories. It, it, it took me back to, you know, being 15 again. It took me back to sneaking and sneaking to listen to it. Um, it took me back to being over Jay Fresh's crib and listening to it. And just our persona and how we carried ourselves and how we knew every line for line, word for word. And again, it just took me back to how we viewed Easy E as this mythical figure. And I mean, like we any word, I mean, like if he said he shot somebody, I just assumed that he did because here's the thing: like I knew what a gang was, I knew what a blood was and a crip was, but I'd never heard it expressed on wax like this. And that was my introduction to LA, LA gangs, gang culture. Uh, and you can, I guess, looking back on it, you could say that it was probably, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say it was more explosive back then, but it was just, it, it was refreshing just to hear something different. Cause this was totally different from run DMC. This was totally different from LL. This was totally different from Curtis blow and everybody else who we were listening to at the time. So totally different from Eric B and Rakim. Um, but it was refreshing, man. It was, it was totally refreshing. Um, this album, uh, one of the, again, in my opinion, it is one of the pillars from 1988 and 1988 was a phenomenal year in hip hop. Uh, but I think this is one of the best albums to come out that particular year, not the best, but one of the best to come out that year. Um, it went gold and eventually certified platinum, um, did crazy numbers. And this, this again is a street album. And I think you made a great point, E, that, that really gets lost with people. Easy E created this filthy ass parental av- advisory stickered album, but then he had a clean version. And you could cl- play the clean version on the radio if they so choose to, but they didn't. But um, yeah, incredible album. What what did you before we get into the tracks, what did you think about the um the production, which was I'm assuming mostly done by or all done by a uh, Dr. Dre. Well, people people know my opinions on Dr. Dre, probably the most overrated producer in hip hop history. Um, but uh, listen, Stop. at the time, it, it, it's true. Um, but at the time, I mean, the beats were crazy. The 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 samples immaculate um he only had one misstep as far as i'm concerned it's only it's only one bad song on this on this album and um um i i, I loved it i, I loved the, the the scratching um shouts to uh dj yella and um and um the 
the the music that they did play, uh, Standing Guitar Man. Um, it was it was mm-hmm. really good. I, it's, I mean, especially back then, if you if you didn't know anything about uh, funk and you didn't listen to Parliament, you would think that this guy was a genius. But if you know what you know, <laughs> if you know, you know he didn't really do that much. But um, it, it was the 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 samples, the beats, crazy. Yeah, yeah, I. I... I thoroughly enjoyed the production. Um, I mean, going back and listening to it, uh, you know, listening to uh, like the drums on Too Hard Motherfuckers was like, I mean, it, it, it took me back. It took me back to just like, I remember listening to it when I was a kid and it's like, oh man, are these, you know, I'm assuming it is a drum machine. And, you know, you really couldn't tell if it was a drum machine or they were really playing it live in the studio. Not that we really cared one way or the other, but it was just, it, it, it was just, it was funky, man. It was funky. I, I really, really love this album from top to bottom. Um, so let's get into it, man. Um, this album runtime right at 50 minutes. So it's a little less than an hour. Um, I didn't think that there was long at all. Uh, all the songs were produced by Dr. Dre and DJ Yella, uh, both of NWA fame. Um, so the album starts off with track number one. Still talking, written by the DOC and Ice Cube. Uh, what do you think about Still Talking? Still Talking might be my favorite song on the album. I, mm, yeah, I think really? it is. I think it is. I think it is my my favorite favorite song. Um, just <laughs> number one. Before you even get to it. Good evening and welcome to Easy's Playhouse, you stupid motherfucker. Now that you got the album, the fuck you gonna do with it, bitch? <laughs> like, yo, okay. That's the intro. But, uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So back what I was saying earlier, it starts with yo, the nigga came from Compton, Michigan, <laughs> and um, and the. Uh, Easily, I approach the microphone because I ain't no joke, man. I love this song, um, and <laughs> he he was just ridiculous from the beginning, psychopathic. But the holes are attractive because when I'm a hard, my dick was at least a yard, and and yard. and, and having <laughs> having Cube and Dre at in the beginning. Of uh, or at the end, there's no chorus. There's no hook. Mm-hmm. It's right. just Ice Cube and Dr. Dre talking like old men in a, a barbershop. And um, now nah, it's uh, this the song. The song is great. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It it, it is a great way to start off the album. Um, like you said, I like how they they come back in and in and out with the the old guys at the end. Um, which again, the voices of Ice Cube and DLC, but still, I mean, a, an incredible way to start off this album. Then we get to track two. Wait, hold on. Before you get to track two, okay. Another another thing that they did that was really dope that didn't really happen that much or almost at all on rap songs back then. The third verse, different beat. Cause, oh, no um, doubt. Cause uh, it was like, uh, wait a minute, cut this shit, yellow boy. Why don't you rewind it? And then it went like backwards, like a Paul mm-hmm. Revere thing. Mm-hmm. And he was like, niggas don't see, I'm a hundred percent legit, and you know it ain't about all that bullshit. And so, and and at the um, before, at the end of every verse, he just said, I'm, I'm, I'll still be talking shit, or I'm still talking shit. And then at the end of the third verse, he says, "You can quote me now because I'm still talking shit." Still and talking shit. Yeah, and nah. So I, I love that shit. There. I could do the mashed potato, nigga. What can you do? I can do the boogaloo. <laughs> I can do the mashed potato. Man, that's still hilarious to this day. Uh, then we get to track two. Nobody. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. Written by uh, MC Ren. What you got on this one? Um, nobody move is in the top fifty uh, story rhymes that I'm counting down over on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember exactly what number it is. I think, but, it's, in the, I think it's in the thirties. I think. Um. It pop, it possibly, possibly. <clears throat> I'm not gonna waste you guys' time for me to go and check real quick, but. 
this song again if if you want to be considered dope you have to have story rhymes got it. and i don't care listen this this era is this era but if you have a story rhyme i i you don't move me so this this <laughs> song is there about <laughs> to rob this joint it's um easy and brand and it's so many funny things that happens in this in this heist um first of all they they're robbing a bank and he uh, easy e is narrating the whole thing uh he's he's tying up people uh yes. he, and then and then then it's he got a girl she had giant titties and then he's about to fuck and then finding out it was a dude and then then he was going to kill kill them off the strength of that and that mm. but one of the dopest things well all right another funny thing so oh. this man is this man is holding up the bank and he he gets on the the phone with the cops for the demands and easy <laughs> says we want a copter so we could get away clean and take some pussy along if you know what i mean like what why you just you just talking to the cop like yeah you know what i mean man we want to take some pussy why are you talking to the police yeah. in such a fashion but um right right and uh and uh, 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 uh easy shot a hostage but the best mm-hmm. thing about it the best thing about it is that as as gangster as they were and as 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 robbing the bank and taking people's money and, and shooting people and everything they got caught <laughs> the, the 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 cops got them yeah. and 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 they got caught uh, at the, the end of the he said <laughs> and i hope they don't think that a lesson was taught cuz a nigga like the e was finally caught my gap wouldn't fire. The shit wouldn't work. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what time it is. <laughs> so, so, so even back then, and this this is my biggest problem with rap exactly. and hip hop and how things went is that people took the hardcore gangster part of this and and ran with it, but not that we got caught or you shouldn't do this and if you smoke cane, you a stupid motherfucker or all of the bad shit that happened to them because of the stuff mm-hmm. they're doing. They, they paid no attention to that. But um, also how funny they were. Everyone tried to go straight serious like they're mad killers, but if you listen to EZE and the NWA, it's all in fun. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I agree. I, I think that's the thing that actually gets lost in a lot of in a lot of instances when they talk about it because you know they 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 focus on the well, hey, you know, you're talking about this gangster stuff and this 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 and that, and yeah, it was different and it was something new and it was something uh, that really had not been exposed to the masses on this particular level. But no, nah, there, there was a lesson in it, and I mean, like you know, we could see through even at our young ages we could see through the humor and get humor from it because like, I remember sitting and listening to it, even, even going back to the uh, NWA and the posse uh, tape, you know, like you hear some of the songs, like you said, bro. And like the songs are probably, okay, here, here's the thing. Let me let the kid out of the bag. This album is misogynistic. It is graphic. It is violent. It is, uh, it is explicit. It is um, predatory. It is all of the things that are negative, but it's also comical. And more importantly, more than anything else, it's entertaining. And so we found entertainment in it, no matter how much you thought it was bad or how much you thought it was bad for us to be listening to, uh, particularly as young kids. But I mean, that's what we got from it. And even in saying all of that, it's still at the core, a dope ass album. And that's what we took from it. So it like, you as far as the public saying that this album shouldn't be listened to or should be thrown in the trash or whatever it, it didn't deter us from listening to it it just and it wasn't going to deter us from listening to it because we we'd already found it and fell in love with it um well, not not on, not only that is the difference in the generations so when we're young and we're listening to this 
it's, there's there's a there's a byproduct and a benefit of growing up while rap slash hip hop was beginning and evolving and turning into something. And that byproduct is we looked at it for what it was. It was art. It was music. It was entertainment. So we would listen to N.W.A. and listen to E.C.E. the same as we would watch Die Hard Mm -hmm. or the same as we would watch Scarface. None of us thought, damn, they just robbed a bank and got and got arrested and they're in jail because <laughs> because I'm actually listening to them. And he's not going to tell the, the, the police he went a copter so he can take some pussy with him. So so mm-hmm. <laughs> and the thing is, so we took this as entertainment where the gener a couple of generations after took it as law and took it serious and said, we want to, we want to be like that. We were just listening like, yeah, all right, cool. I mean, this is, it's, it's it's just entertainment. We don't want to be like, we don't want to be like what they're talking about. We wouldn't mind being like them because they sound cool, but we know that what, who they are and what they're talking about is two different things. It's just like uh, a actor and the role they play. Like, yeah, I, I would want to be like Denzel. I don't want to be Denzel in glory. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, we really did feel like that. Now, it, we, I, I mean, by the time I got immersed in this album, man, you couldn't change my mind or nothing. I, like I said, Easy E was a guy that we looked up to, and, and he was he was a mythical figure. And we didn't, you know, looking back on it at the time, we really didn't know a lot about him. But that made it even doper because, like, when you heard the stories and the rumors, you just assumed every everything else was true. So, it, it, it was um it, it was a time, man. It, it was a great time. Um, track three, ruthless villain. This is featuring Easy E and MC Ren, man. What you got on this one, man? Well, um, ruthless villain, you didn't get on the tape. So when the tape came out, this song wasn't on it, and the only way to get this song was to get the sing, the radio single. Um, it had radio, Easy Does It, and um, on, mm-hmm. on side B, on the um, vinyl. On the flip side, it had Ruthless Villain. So that was the only way you could hear it at the time. Then they started putting it on the tape. Um, this is really basically a Ren, um, a Ren song. What I liked about this song he started the ver- uh, started the verse ruthless gangster definition villain, leaving shit unlocked and he's stealing, and so then the second verse, well the hook is easy e because I'm a ruthless villain, cold tearing shit up, don't come in my face, popping no kind of junk, easy e's control, and if you press your luck, I smoke you like that and won't give a fuck. But anyway, so then the second verse though. MC Ren comes as ruthless gangster definition villain. You can lock up your shit. He's still stealing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the first is leaving shit unlocked and he's stealing. Then the second verse is you can lock up your shit. He's still stealing. Um, the thing about these mm-hmm. songs is you can, well, you, if you do any kind of knowledge, they recorded all of these songs around the same time. The Straight Outta Compton songs and the Easy E songs because ruthless villain is sampled on just about every song goes straight out of Compton. Ruthless villain Facts. is sa- ruthless villain is sampled on straight out of Compton. Fuck the police. Gangsta gangsta. If it ain't rough, uh, quiet on the set. Every one of those songs. Again, this is why Dr. Dre is not that dope. He sampled the same song on like the whole. Anyway. Come on, now, um, come on now. But Ruthless Gangster is sampled on the DOC, Let the Bass Go. It's um is sampled on um uh what's the other? It's a, it's another joint that um that this thing is um uh the Easy E song, it's on and um MC Ren song, check it out, y'all. It's so mm-hmm. the Boys in the Hood remix has Ruthless. Yep. Ruthless villain yep. uh, sample <clears throat> on every so, Yeah, it's, it's so, but yeah, if you had the tape in '88, you didn't get this song. Yeah, ruthless villain, man. One of is is probably my second favorite song on the album. 
I love it, man. I, I love, I love, and it, and just like I said, going back and playing it, man, it just brought back so many memories. It brought back memories of just sitting in the car, just, you know, in a parked car, just sitting and listening to this music. And, um, you know, just brought me back to the teenage years. Um, and then another favorite of mine, track four, featuring it again, featuring MC, MC Ren, Two Hard Mothers. What you got on this one, man? This is this song I probably uh, quote the most because, like, if I'm out and talking with people and and someone says uh, they forgot something, I always say something like, "You dumb motherfucker! What the fuck we gonna do now?" Or I'll say, "Man, I can play the drums." <laughs> <laughs> or if, so, if, if, if someone if someone says that if I say something they don't believe me, I'd be like, "Man, I used to fuck it up at Compton High." <laughs> so just because of the song, and and it's it's so funny because the people around that know know, and um, uh, oh, it's I was it was something else. One day I was told we were just fucking around at a bar or something. And mm-hmm. somebody said that they could do something. I was like, get this nigga some sticks. <laughs> so, because so, so everyone in the beginning of this song, in the beginning of this song, um, um, they asked where the drum machine is. And Dr. Trailer said he left it with poo. And then they're like, you dumb motherfucker, what the fuck we gonna do now? And, and Yellow was like, uh, no, uh, he said, hey, man, I got some drums in the back. And then she was like, do we look like we can play some drums, some fucking drums? And Yellow's like, man, I can play the <laughs> drums. It's like bullshit. He said, man, I used to fuck it up in Compton High. <laughs> and it was like, get this nigga some sticks. Yeah, Compton High. Yo, fuck it up, Yellow. And, um, yes, but sir. I, I love this song. Um, uh this is a this is another song where again this Strata Compton is great, but these songs, man, is 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 these, but I can hear the excitement thing, in your voice. <laughs> the one thing, the one thing that I was gonna say, this is one of the funniest things, and me and uh DeMarco, we laugh at this to this day. All right, because no rapper, say. no rapper in the history of rap has ever said this <laughs> about them, <laughs> themselves. And we we would be anywhere to this day, dead silence. Mm-hmm. And one of us look at the other one and say, look at me, I'm a crazed bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker MC Red started the verse and said, now look at me, I'm a crazed bitch. When it comes to profanity, I'm bitch. I'm a crazed bitch. <laughs> What the fuck? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know where that came from. Um oh, I don't know where that came from. Yeah, this this song's great. Yeah, man. Shout out to DeMarco, man. Um track five, Boys in the Hood Remix. <sighs> Written by Ice Cube. What you got on this one? Um, the original Boys in the Hood was on NW and the Posse. The um Thanks. So and obviously a single, but this um this is this is just as dope. See, they they ruined remixes on uh, Eight Ball and Dope Man on Straight Outta Compton. Those remixes suck. If compared to compared to the original song, those suck. This this does injustice. This is this is great. Um, I I, I love the beginning. They're like, yo, remember. That shit easy did a while back, which is last year. But remember that shit that easy right. did a while back. And if you listen, they're like, yo, hey man, why don't you come off that piano a minute? And bust this crazy shit. And he plays a little on the piano, like he's really getting off the piano. But this song is mm-hmm. outstanding. This is if this wasn't the remix, this would probably be my favorite song on the album. But I, I like the original better. Um, this shit, the, the beat, the way it, when it drops is crazy. Um, this song introduced me to uh, GTA. I didn't know what GTA was until I heard this song. Um, um, <laughs> he was he was jocking the bitches. Grand Theft Auto. 
Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> and um, it, he was uh, jacking the bitches and smacking the hoes. Um, uh, back in the day when your when your when your car shit was dope, you had, you had an Alpine. Uh, JD stole his Alpine. Um, uh, mm-hmm. What else? What it was one more thing. Um, uh, what was it? What was? Th- oh, he um he he was he he wrecked his car and he said, "I'm not go buy another one." But the best part. <laughs> Oh my God, this song, man. I believe this, this is also on the top 50. So, yeah. if you don't know anything about this song, let me tell you the crux of this song. <laughs> he sees his boys, <laughs> Kilo, Kilo G. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. they get to put it like this. Anyway, they get in trouble. They 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 they're, they're in court. With the law. They're they're in court, <laughs> a municipal court. <laughs> Kilo G <laughs> farts. <laughs> he farts in court, <laughs> and the judge says it's disruption of the court because <laughs> he just farts, and then Kilo G Kilo G yells out fire. Then Susie comes in. With a Uzi. Now, how did Susie get the Uzi through security and all the way to the courtroom? We have no idea. No, we have no idea. But uh, the police shot Susie, and then they both went upstate for attempted murder. Again, all of this hardcore gangster ass shit. One, funny because he's talking about dude farting in court. Two. Mm-hmm. They get caught, the girl gets shot, and they went upstate for attempted murder. It was no happy ending. No, no, so. not at all. <laughs> not at all. I yeah, you 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 hit on all the points, man. The only the only thing I have to add is uh we used to the the the, the saying that we used to use after this album came out, don't quote me, boy, because I ain't said shit. Hey, we used to say that all the time. Yeah. Somebody be like, Man, you did you see such and such? Nah, man. Are you sure? Nah, don't quote me, boy, because I ain't said shit. <laughs> oh, man, this, this takes me back. Then track six, the title track, Easy Does It, written by MC Ren and Dr. Dre. What you got on this one? Um, we got we got a, we got a little Michelle Lay on here. And um, mm-hmm. one of the greatest intros to any song. Easy, but you should bitch, shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yo, Dre, give me a funky ass bass line. <laughs> and, um, and got me in trouble. <laughs> Yo, know, while I'm easy E, I got bitches galore. You may have a lot of bitches, but I got much more. Man, it's so more. simple. <laughs> but, man, oh my God, how many times we used to be like, man, I got bitches galore. <laughs> But um, uh, this song's crazy. Um, if you heard Dope Man, you think I own a drugstore. Um, uh, mm, yeah, this, so this, yeah, this this song is 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 crazy. Yeah, man. I, I um, th- like I said, I, I won't go into the story again because I've talked about it on, on this podcast several times. But yeah, this is the song. This intro is what got me in trouble. Um, my aunt heard me listening to it on my headphones. She told my mom. My mom told my mom played it. My mom made me play it. And when she heard Easy E cussing out Michelle, a, she told me to take the she told me to take the shit out of her house with all this cussing it, even though she just cussed. And uh, she told me to throw it in the trash. I walked right past the trash can, act like I threw it in the trash. I did not. Um, I, I think I really truly believe that if that had not happened, if she had not forbade me from listening to it in her house, then I probably wouldn't have gravitated to what is the way that I did. But given the fact that she told me not to do it, that made me want to do it even more. And I became even a bigger, bigger hip hop fan from that point on. Um, and a bigger fan uh, of this album. I wish, I wish that this song, that I wish that they were still alive. I wish someone, this is why the things that people try to do now are dumb. 
it was um a few years ago i think it was irv Gotti had these uh, <laughs> little little shows where they took mm -hmm. inspiration from songs and oh, turned them into yeah. short shows yeah now, this i wish it was a video for this i wish it was something like this because the end of this song he went to jail and mm -hmm. he called his girl to come bail him out <laughs> and she hung up on him and he like yo mm -hmm. all the shit i did for her i swear when i get out i'm gonna kill the bitch and the bailiff of the station was a fucking cluck head and easy e mm -hmm. made a deal with him was like yo come on I, I got you. So he gets out. <laughs> he gets out of jail. And boy, he lived, he lived up to his word. Said he <laughs> with an Uzi machine, went to the house, kicked down the door, unlo unloaded like hell, cold smoke down. Smoked the hole. Straight killed it. Oh, man. This, oh, oh man. So, so the thing about yeah, this you, song. They don't make music like this anymore. No. And, and the thing about this song. They, they leaned into the rumors and and the that they made and the, the mystery behind them. At the end of this song, they said, from around the way, born in 73, hardcore <laughs> b-boy named Eazy-E. Eazy-E. It's, <laughs> it's 88 now, 73 is obsolete. A nigga with a serious ass attitude and 100% street. And if y'all want to hear some more, in one way or the other, I'm a bad, bad brother. brother. Word to the motherfucker. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I mean, like, even, and then for them to say that he was born in 73, so I was born in 72. So I'm like, this dude can't be my age. There's no way. There's no possible way that I'm 15 or 16 or however old I was. I think I was turning, I was about to turn 16. Um, I was like, there's no way. There's, there's no way in hell that this guy's my age. But um, then we get to track seven, which is my favorite song on the album. We Want Easy featuring MC Ren and Dr. Dre produced, or excuse me, written by the DOC. Uh, they shot a video for it in a jail. Uh, what you got on this one, man? Um, ladies and gentlemen, I did a podcast episode on this music video. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. when this music video came out, this was the first time we really saw Eazy-E. Yes. And, and I remember this is back when we would record videos. Yes. And I had my video and I had my, my tape in. I had record and pause, press. All I had to do was hit pause and then it would record. And I was watching and it starts with him just walking around a corner but it was no music <laughs> it was no music so me not knowing who he was i'm just looking i'm like i'm not gonna record this i don't know what this is but right when he walked past the police in the right in the beginning it went compton yeah i was like oh nobody uses that for them <laughs> I, I hit it i was like oh shit, that's him and we was watching it and um and yada 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 i ended up I'm not spoiling the episode, still go listen to it. But after that video went off, I took the tape out and I walked almost across the city to my boy's house because they didn't have cable. So I knew they didn't see it. And I had mm. to show them that video. Um, uh, but but the mm -hmm. song, um, uh, we wow. got Michelle A. This is back when we thought Michelle A was a kid. We didn't know that that was really Michelle A. Um, but she was in. Yes. She was in the video. We had no idea. She, yeah, uh, she was in the video. But anyway, um, again, if you don't know anything about funk and you never heard of Bootsy Collins, you would think Dr. Dre is a genius. But if you know Amen. who Bootsy Collins is and you know what funk is, you're like Dr. Dre is a fraud. <laughs> so, no, no, he he sampled it. We won't. What, he sampled he uh, didn't, uh, Bootsy. I love he it. Didn't, he didn't sample it. He just played it again. Anyway, I love this song. I mean, I'm not, was, I'm not, was, I'm not shitting on the song. <clears throat> Me too. I'm, I'm, I'm not shitting on the song. But yeah, 
Um, I, I, I am a huge fan of, uh, of this song. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yo, man, you weren't born in no 73. Why you be lying about your age? All he said was, man, why you got to bring that up? Who are you, Gene Archer or somebody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. It, it um, This song, man, the song and the video, I mean, they go, they're synonymous for me. Um, They bring back so many memories that you, you took me back to the, you know, trying to record it and, and show it to your friends because, yeah, you had to, trust me, kids, you had to have a tape in your VCR because you never knew when the video was coming on. And so we recorded videos like every single day. And sometimes you might record over your mom's, you know, soap operas that she recorded that particular day. I mean, it, it, man, it was a great time to be alive because I mean, you just, you live for those moments. And when you, once you, once you recorded a video, like easy does it, I mean, excuse me, like we want easy, you would watch it over it and over and over again like i had seen it maybe two or three times before i realized that was ice cube in the, the audience like where we where we your homeboy where we taking this to jam to like that and um, was, you know ice i mean just little also, subtle things like that he was uh, also it, in, it was a dope in jail time. with him he was also in jail with him holding a camera <laughs> he was <laughs> so you know if you look at the videos now you realize kind of how low budget they were, how they kind of pulled tricks or whatever like that, man. But it was great times, great times. Um, then we get to track eight. Easier said than done, written by Dr. Dre and the DOC. What you got on that one? Hated this video. Loved the song, though. Um, I'm trying to think, did I, did, I, did I see the video for this one? Yeah, of course. They played, this way. They played huh. the hell out of this video. Wait, the, let me look, the, let me look at it. We want easy video. They almost never play. They played this video into the dirt, and I did not like this video at all. The only part that I liked was um, when he said, "Easy said it, and it shall be done." And he was leaning over to a police car when he said it on the thing. But um, um, I love the song, though. Um, the my favorite, my favorite shit that I still use to this day. But what if she's ugly? Easy come, easy go. <laughs> easy come, easy go. Um, <laughs> so, 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 loving the ladies only the fly ones, you know. Um, and again, they um, this is where they came. They came clean. Um, uh, said before that I was born in seventy three. Now everybody wants to know the AGE. Girls on the tip, fellas too, as it seemed, had everybody thinking I was only 15. <laughs> so, but, but this is when we were like, oh shit, so he's not. We didn't know until then. <laughs> but yeah, had everybody thinking I was only 15. Okay. I'm looking at the video now. I remember it. I remember it. Wow. I have not seen this video. Sheesh. It's been some years. It's been at least 10, 15 years since I've seen this video. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mind. I didn't like it the way I liked uh, "We Want Easy," but um, I liked it. <clears throat> this video, was but yeah, it was, it was a dope jam, man. It was it, it was a dope jam. Um, then we get to track nine, radio. I love this joint, man. What did you think yeah, about radio, buddy? Radio was so dope. Right, that is the um, inspiration for the beginning of my podcast when I had the radio uh, switching around. Say um, word. Yeah, that's 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 why it does like that because of this song. Um, shouts to Greg Mac Mac Attack. Uh, so they had um, this song, and people call into the radio, and it was for the radio. He didn't curse mm -hmm. on this song. Nope, not at all. And and um, and it was one of the dopest songs on the album, and he didn't curse at all. Um, and again, if you know music, then you know where that sample came from. And, and blah, 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 blah. But um, also, man, it's a great sample from uh, the GOAT and your radio's death with my records on. That, uh, you know, you got to listen. If you don't have an LL sample on your album, is your album really dope? Um, so so we, 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 we enjoyed uh, Joyce calling. You know, can I have your phone number? Yes, yeah, 976, click. And, um, uh, what else? It was uh, the other dude. <laughs> uh, uh, the other dude. Uh, uh, Standing guitar man called. 
called in, yo, Stan, remember me? Like, yeah, I play, man. Yep. I play guitar on this record. I want to know when I get paid, mother click. <laughs> I play guitar on this record that you're playing right now. This <laughs> album. <laughs> oh, man. They had so much fun. They had so much yeah, fun we're... making this album. Yeah, yeah man. It, you, you could tell. You could tell. Even, even like I said, going back and listening to it, it's little subtle things that I pick up, you know, and, and I could you could hear the fun that they had. And I'm trying to imagine them being in the studio, you know, all together making these sounds and these noises, especially in, in some of these little intros that they have. Um, but radio is another joint, man. It it it, it is a forever jam. Um, and easy, you know, easy kind of got easy's not listen, we, we we'll never confuse easy Eve from Rock Kim. <laughs> but you know, he, he had a little, he was he was in the pocket with his flow, man. I I thought I, I really like that joint, man. And even to this day, I think it's still. You know, when I hear radio, I think back to the and I know the movie Straight Out of Compton, which we did a podcast on. Um, it is simulated and set up to show how, particularly when he first got started, like Easy couldn't rap, like how they taught him how to rap. And so, like, I see him trying to rap, and and you juxtapose that with this particular song where he's got the flow. So, um. Yeah, still, uh, like I said, one of my favorites on this album. Uh, then we get to track number 10, No More Questions, written by Ice Cube. Man, what you got on this one? Man, this um, this this song, it, they didn't do songs like this. This was this was like a, a no. sit-down interview. And um, <laughs> tell me, how was your life as a youngster? <laughs> and then he just starts... Ramen. Again, this is this is back when you listen to songs and you find out about things. Mm-hmm. What, what is ganking? <laughs> <laughs> what would be in a situation where you would so-called gank someone mm-hmm. Wait for some people to leave? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> getting ganked by the E is a lesson. <laughs> um, uh, and so, th- look, uh, have you ever been involved in an armed robbery? You mean a 211? <laughs> Like hey. <laughs> also, I remember this song when this song came out, and uh, I think it was the third verse when, they, when he was robbing the uh, store. He's like, "Fill the bag, homeboy, and don't lag up on money, beer, and a pack of zigzags." At the time, this was what '88. I didn't know what zigzags were. I thought it was a candy or or uh, like a hostess, like a hostess Same. cake. Same. Yeah, but. Um, Nah, I, I I love that. I love this song. Hey, you <laughs> so know what? That's what exactly, I miss too about hip hop too. You, you're not exactly a role model. Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I miss this part of hip hop, man, because like, like I said, we at, at the beginning, we we had no knowledge. I, I I had no context clue as to where Compton was, and it wasn't until I listened to it more and more, I was like, okay, oh, it's in California. Oh, it's in L.A. And then, you know, I think I look, I ended up looking it up on a map or something like that, because trust me, um, nobody in South Carolina was telling us in public schools where, you know, Compton was. So, I mean, like you, and then you pick up on slang, like gank, gaffle, you know, Jack, you know, get you, you picked up on, you know, gang terms. Um, like you said, he said, when he said 211, it wasn't until like I was an adult that I realized what a 211 was, because that's not something that was you know, familiar to me because I didn't grow up in California. And so, you know, I, I think like everybody, the, the point that I think a lot of people missed when it came to NWA and Easy e in particular is that they were dropping jewels on you. And it did, it wasn't the same as, <clears throat> you know, maybe a Chuck D or X clan or somebody like that, that had a quote unquote message, but there was message in the music. And like you said earlier, there was consequences too. There wasn't like I killed a bunch of people and I got away. You know, I killed a bunch of people. I ended up in jail, whatever, whatever. And, um, you know, or, or Kilo G cut a fart in the courtroom. And now we got, <laughs> we now we got sent upstate. So, I mean, like, I, th- I think that's the thing that I think a lot of people miss, you know, they, they, they hear the, the, the graphic details and the violence quote unquote, but I think there's, there's messages there. And I think if you stop and listen, 
you can see you know where EZ was coming from. Um, then we get to track 11. I'm going to break it down. Written by MC Ren. What you got on this one? I'm going to break it down. Ooh. Um, This is the only song that I'm like, I don't know. This, this, is, this is my least favorite. Uh, again, a testament to this album. Mm-hmm. We've gone through this whole album. Look how long it's taken until we got to some where one of us at least was like, mm. And for me, this this song, even though I still fuck with it, this mm-hmm. is definitely better than something to dance to. <laughs> <laughs> something this to is, dance to is a jam, bro. Come on, this man. This is way better. Um, but it, this song doesn't fit on this album. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still okay. See. It's still okay. It's just that after everything we've listened to, and then this come on, you're like, come on, man. Why? Now you want me to dance? You just killed 34 <laughs> people, robbed two banks, killed <laughs> killed a clerk. Robbed a couple of holes. <laughs> and, now, and now you want me to throw some ass. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, man, I like that. I'm going to break it down. I, I think it's now I will. I will agree with you on this point. It's probably it's, it's not a skip for me because keep in mind, I had to tape. So I couldn't I had to sit through this. But I think it's not in on the same caliber as the other songs. I would be interested in, and this is one of the, the downsides of you know Easy E not being here. I would love to hear how this album was sequenced or how they came about. You know, trying to figure out where to place what. Um, it's not a skip. It's it's probably the uh, up at least at least up until this point, it's the least best song on the album. But I think it's a still solid song. It's 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 one that even now, where I can skip, I don't skip. Um, I just, I, like I said, man, I just, in, in going back and playing it, I was just enjoying hearing it again. And maybe it's because I hadn't heard it in a while as far as listening to this album in its entirety. Of course, you hear, you know, Boys in the Hood, you hear uh, Nobody Move. You hear these songs randomly from time to time, but just to sit through the album in its, in, in the 50 minute entirety, I think is was a good thing for me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to break it down. I, I like it. Like I said, I don't like it as much as I like the others. Um, but it's still, like I said, dope to, nonetheless. Uh, then we get to the final track on the album, Easy Chapter Verse 8. <clears throat> chapter 8, excuse me, verse 10. What you got on this one? It's just an outro. He's mm-hmm. just talking shit, you mm-hmm. know? So, like, I mean, I don't even really count this as a song. He's just, he's, you know, this is, it's fine. You know, this, this it's a, not it was a send off. It was a send off. Yeah, it's, it's an outro. I put on, I put on, um, uh, Twitter X uh, a few weeks ago <laughs> that I miss, and this this doesn't count for this, but it's in the same vein. I miss when rappers had the dedication and mm-hmm. shout out tracks on the album. So it's usually it's usually the last song or the second to last song, and um, but even just outros, and this is this is just an outro. I I consider. Um, the, the shake your ass song, the, the <laughs> official last track on here, but but uh, I'm gonna break it down. But yeah, this this was a cool outro. Um, uh, what was it? What was it? Uh, uh, what did he say? I'd like to tell you, brother, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Da 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 da. <laughs> yeah, man. <it's, laughs> no, it ain't. You fucked up. You fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, man, it, it, it you you're right. It, they, I don't, and I, I probably, I would probably say that probably ended, what maybe in, in the mid to late '90s. Um, the dedication tracks at the end of the album, um, we grew up on that. I mean, like you, if you didn't shout people out on the last track of your album, at the very least, you did it in the um, in the liner notes. Um, but we're from that era, and so I, I, I do miss that as well. Um, Overall, man, like I said, it's 50 minutes. It's a very easy listen, uh, no pun intended. Um, if you haven't heard the album, I would implore each and every one of you at the conclusion of this podcast uh, that you go and listen to it because it, it it doesn't sound dated. I think it's just as entertaining. It's just as funny. It's just as funky. It's just as clever as it was back in 1988. And it's still kind of hard for me to believe that this album is 35 years old. Um, and, you know... 
it's bittersweet because you know obviously Easy E's no longer with us. Uh, NWA would go on and he would go on and and do bigger and better things before he left this earth. But um, you know, for for a debut album coming out of Compton, a place that we'd never heard of, he literally put the city on the map. And uh, man, shout out to uh, my boy Uncle Dolomite uh, from the Too Much Game podcast. Huge Easy E fan, so I know he's gonna be listening to this one. Um, um, you know, Easy E, man, like I said. Uh, very much so a mythical figure um definitely ahead of his time as far as creating ruthless records as far as you know launching nwa uh you know people call him the godfather of gangster rap i think i mean you could call him that but you could call him even more uh before we get out of here e, let me ask you this and i think i know what your answer is but i want to ask you anyway as you notice as we were talking about these songs i gave you who wrote the song so easy e isn't credited with writing not one song on this album. Does that matter to you that he didn't write it? He didn't write his run. Um, no. And the reason, and and listen, you're talking to me, the Mister. Oh, you ain't right. Oh, you ain't. You know, you ain't shit. But it's a it's a difference. One, the first or second song he ever rhymed on, he told us. Who wrote his mm-hmm. rhymes? Mm-hmm. So what it, is it's not fronting. It's not fronting like, yeah, my pen is crazy. He said, nah, nah, ice cream wrote r- r- this. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's mm-hmm. one. There, there was no fronting. There was it was no question. Two, if you wrote your rhymes, comes into play or matters to me. If one, you're fronting like you did and you didn't, mm-hmm. or two, you're in the conversation for dopest anything, or did you kill it on something? No, as, as all of the, the 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 lists and the drafts that we do and and debates that we have, no one mentions Easy E as one of the illest lyricists or one of the best top rap. No, we don't because you are. No, my- automatically immediately disqualified because you didn't write the rhymes. So it's 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 like um mm-hmm. it's there's there's reasons why Prince is higher than maybe Luther. Prince writes the songs, plays right. the instrument, produces it, probably goes and makes the vinyl for the for the album, makes it a circle, <laughs> draws the cover. <laughs> And sends it out and you know what I'm saying? Uh, go, works in Sam Goody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So meanwhile, you know, other people just get a dope song and they sing the hell out of it. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh, is he a better singer? Yeah, he's a better singer. Who's the better artist? Well, that guy's the better artist. So so right. so um we look at we look at Easy E as the 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 legend, the personality, the the energy that he brings on the song, or how different he is, and not for nothing. He even though he didn't write the stuff, it was probably more authentic to his real life than anybody else's. Oh, no question. He was no question. the actual gangster. <laughs> so yes. So. So, um, but no, it doesn't bat- it doesn't matter because we're not trying to put him in that category. If we tried mm-hmm. to put him in that category, then it would matter. I don't care if people don't write their rhymes. Just don't come to me and try to tell me that they're dope. Right. Yeah. yeah and I, th- I think he, like you said, he, he came out from the beginning saying like that everybody else wrote his rhyme. And, and no, and, and listen, in 88, we didn't, I mean, it mattered to us that Rakim wrote his rhymes. It mattered to us that LL wrote his rhymes. Because they were lyrically on a different level. It didn't matter to us that Easy didn't write his rhymes because he wasn't on that level as far as lyricism. But as far as his delivery and what he was saying, you held on to Easy E's words just the same as you did LL La Rakim's. And he's revered and respected and was revered and respected just as much up until the day that he died and even beyond, you know, for, for what he talked about, mm-hmm. uh, regardless of whether or not he wrote it, wrote it or not. So and again, um, the biggest thing was he didn't front. Nope. And and I mean, and just coming out and, and putting that, whether he said it or Ice Cube wrote it for him to say it, 
that's more gangster than anything. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, um, Ice Cube wrote these rhymes, but I'm dope the way that I'm saying them. Like, if somebody else said them, it wouldn't mm-hmm. sound like this. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. And, you know, people respected Ice Cube's pen and they respected Easy as far as his, his ability to, to deliver and just who he was as a gangster, as a man, and as a businessman. And, yo, um, <clears throat> go ahead. Not for nothing. Easy E is a fucking legend because if you really think about what we're saying right now this mm-hmm. this individual this guy mm-hmm. had ice cube mc ren and the doc writing for him can you like that's that's the equivalent of uh like bleak having jay-z nas and fucking uh az writing his rhymes for him right just because he probably still strength. fuck it up, but <laughs> just, but when you when you have when you have those three writing for you, mm-hmm. clearly dope, and you arguably end up being the most famous out of all of them. Yeah, yeah. That's you can make it. I mean, you can crazy. easily make that case. You can easily make that case. And I mean, like when people talk about, you know, not just West Coast hip hop, but when they talk about hip hop in general. You know, easy easy E name still lives on, you know, even after his, his uh, passing in 1995. And, um, you know, I can't even call him a Compton legend because he literally and figuratively for at least for me, put Compton on the map. Like I only know one person from Compton. Well, I know two people from Compton. <laughs> Uncle Dolomite and my wife, Sharice. That's it. And and Easy E makes makes three. By the way, um, everyone that's listening, uh, Kyle, he's 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 a humble guy. But who Easy or me? No, Kyle. Kyle's a Kyle's a humble guy. He's not going to tell you, so I'm going to tell you. Uh, Kyle's wife is the woman that's asking the questions or no more questions. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> you stupid. I got to tell her you said that too. <laughs> um, man, before we get out of here, man. Tell everybody where they can find you, where they can find the podcast, where they can check you out on social media. Yo, before I do that, I know we're talking about Easy. I just want to mention something that Go ahead. To, this, to this day is still dope as hell to me, What's and it's, it's it's related. It, um, I just I just tweeted this um, last week mm-hmm. on Straight Outta Compton. Now, understand, Straight Outta Compton also came out in '88. Yes, sir. And when Straight Outta Compton came out. People knew Ice Cube, ran. They knew Easy. They knew Dre. They knew Yella. No one knew DLC. They knew Arabian Prince. They did not know DLC. Would you agree or disagree? Right. Right. No, I'd agree. Okay. Uh, Arabian okay. Prince has his own song. All right. He was back with the sound of hype. Now, what was so dope? is that the DOC, and a lot of people slept and didn't notice this, but he had the first mm-hmm. verse on parental discretion is advised. That is that is probably the first time people heard him rap outside of when he was with the Fila Fresh crew. But in 88, no one knows the DOC. And he doesn't even call himself the DLC on the song. He says the doc, which Mm -hmm. if you're not really paying attention, you could think that that's Dr. Dre. But in 88, on that verse, he says, and I quote, you know, the doc makes you want to take a volume, but buy a bucket, which is a car. But buy a bucket, cause upcoming is my album. Mm-hmm. And for the record, meaning my record, check it, listen to the single, and you be like, yo, I gotta get it. Gotta get it. And wouldn't you know, years later, Funky Enough comes out. Yep. Which was his single, and yep. everybody that listened to rap at the time was like, yo, I have to get that album. Facts. And he called that shot in 88 when no one knew who he was. Facts. And it's funny that you say that because I tweeted that verse Mm -hmm. and I added Doc, the DLC. Mm -hmm. And he retweeted that and all he said was facts. 
<laughs> That's true, man. That's true. I mean, like he was on NWA with the pot and the posse, but like if you didn't like I said, for me, I only heard a couple of tracks, so I don't I know he was on that, that album, but you know, I don't know what songs he was on. But um, yeah, man, he he and I I did a review on that album, man. That, that album still, man, it it the DOC still remains a great what if or what could have been. Um, when he said he had, he was a kid with the golden voice, he literally was the kid with the golden voice. I mean, like he had everything. He had a pen, he had a voice, he had stage presence, he had it all. And I mean, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, he lost his voice in that tragic accident. And, you know, there's talk that he's going to be able to do some type of surgery or may, he may be able to get, get it back or something via auto tunes or something like that. I'm not sure, but um, there's talk, there's serious talk that, you know, he could be back in the studio soon uh, to produce an album uh, of his own. And I, I trust me, I don't think he forever, I don't think he forgot how to write. So um, we, we would be, I would be first in line to cop that because I'm a big fan and a huge fan of that album. Um, but like I said, man, this whole, the, the whole NWA crew, um, you cannot go anywhere without recognizing and realizing the imprint and the, the legacy that e easy e left man and this album is a tribute to it again personally i well i can't say i'm like e where I, I don't rank this above straight out of compton but this album means a lot to me it's one of the few albums that like it literally transports me back into 1988 and transports me back into being a child and just the great feelings of learning about this dude that, that, that we Call Easy E, Eric Wright. Um, so with that being said, E, before we get out of here, man, tell folks where they can find you, where they can catch up, catch your podcast. Um, if you're if you're a hip hop listener, you can um go on go on Twitter X and um, at Tweet Rhymes Life. <laughs> hip -hop listener. Yeah, that's Tweet Rhymes Life. That's me. Also, Encyclopedia HH for hip hop. Um, that's that's the account. And that's the podcast, so you can listen. Uh, listen, to me. we're talking um, hip hop from say its inception till like ninety eight. That's 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 what we're talking about over there. We're talking. We we stop at like ninety eight. It's a hard cut off after ninety eight. Yeah, we're not doing that. But look, from <laughs> from the beginning of hip hop till then, that's what we're talking about. You can listen to any episode. Um, they're all evergreen. Um, we got drafts, we got lists, we got uh, reactions, we got um, song uh, rankings, album countdowns. rankings, uh, yeah, countdowns. We, we got stuff, so listen to that. Also, if no you're, doubt, um, no if, you're, if you're if you're if you're old if you're oldie and you like nostalgia, we have the um, eclectic discussion podcast where we talk um, pretty much eighties and nineties everything. Whether it's uh, Little Debbie Snack Cakes, uh, 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 Sesame Street, Electric Company, Saturday Morning Cartoons, uh, uh, just just about everything, uh, high school, grade school, uh, school supplies. Um, so that's um, the Eclectic Podcast. Uh, name of the is the uh, that's the Twitter X uh, handle. So uh, check that out, and um, you you can say what's up to me. Um, I'm not really that nice of a person, but uh, you know, we'll we'll get it. We'll get popping, and I'll keep listening to me on this uh, show because I'm probably the reason why you tune into this episode. <laughs> right, right, right. They came here to hear you. Mm. Um, you guys know where to find me. It's Twelve Kyle across the board on the socials. Twelve Kyle podcast. Uh, remember, this podcast drops every Thursday at midnight from time to time. We drop bonus episodes on Sundays at midnight. Um, if you feel so inclined, hit us up on Cash App. Send a couple of dollars our way. We're not independently wealthy like my friend over here. Uh, so the, the Cash App is dollar sign T-W-E-L-V-E-K-Y-L-E. -E -E. Again, this your boy 12 Kyle with my man Eclectic. This has been another episode of the 12 Kyle Podcast. This time we were, we were talking about Easy Does It 35 years later. Again, <clears throat> if you haven't done so, when you finish this episode, go listen to that album. Go run up the streams. Um, again, an incredible album. Check out Easy E and his whole discography. You will not be disappointed. Again, that's going to do it for us. 
We'll holler at you next time. Five G's. Bye, 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 bye.